All right, so this monk video has been out for a little while. Um, and I've been kind of putting it off because I'm not... <laughs> it's going to be controversial here, but I'm not a huge fan of the monk class. But I know it's fun. Um, but, you know, let's let's jump into it. Tell me all about the new things in the monk. There is so much. When we embarked on creating the new player's handbook, we knew that the monk was going to get a lot of attention. Partly because the monk's satisfaction scores over the last decade have often been, unfortunately, a bit low. Yeah. And the monk, in terms of actual play numbers, has tended to be low as well. That combination told us this class needs some attention. Yeah. Now, every class got a lot of loving attention, but we knew the monk was going to need some deep work done to it. And the deep work that we did in the monk, similar to deep work we did in the ranger, really amounts to this class and the ranger largely being new classes. When you look at the features for the monk, you look down that list, you're gonna see a lot of familiar friends, but also you're going to see some new things. That is evident right away at first level when you dig into the main feature of the monk at that level, martial arts, uh, where you will find out that right away your selection of monk weapons has been broadened to be all simple melee weapons as well as martial melee weapons that have the light property. That's going to give you some more flexibility uh, than you had before. Uh, and we've also now made it so that you can now make with this feature a unarmed strike as a bonus action regardless of what else you're doing on your turn. We used to have it so that the monk had to set up their bonus action unarmed strike uh, before they could, yeah. they could do it. Now you don't need the setup. You just simply have the, always the option to make an unarmed strike as a bonus action. Now, there's even more going on here than that suggests because we have, in the rules glossary, redesigned the unarmed strike itself. And this is a redesign that affects all characters, but will be especially felt by monk players because of how often monks make unarmed strikes. So it used to be in 2014 that the unarmed strike was just a way for anybody to deal some damage if they were uh, without a weapon. Yeah. Now, monks and a few other characters were happy to make unarmed strikes because they often were very effective at them. What we've now done is we have made it so that when you make an unarmed strike, you now have three options of what it does. It can deal damage, like it did before, or you can try to initiate a grapple or you can try to shove your target. Really what we've done is we've taken three different things that used to exist on their own in the game, dealing unarmed damage, grappling, yeah. and shoving, and we've combined them all into your unarmed strike. You've kind of weapon mastered unarmed strikes, basically. And, and we did this for everyone so that you had sort of a single place you could go to for okay somebody might have to explain that to me i don't quite understand why they did that um other than to make it so the dice roll is the same for all three because i know uh to shove uh and some dms ran it as a, an acrobatics check or not acrobatics an athletics check um some ran it as a just a straight strength check uh grapple was i mean i've always run grapple as, as a straight strength check um and then the damage is, you know, however it's supposed to be done. Um, so I don't really understand the reason why they is he's saying, oh, we took these three things and put it into one item, and it's the unarmed strike. Um, it's still, it it may be under the unarmed strike tab if you are looking at it on on the computer or on your phone. Um, but there's still three different things. It's still either the unarmed strike or grapple or shove. It's still three completely separate things, no matter how he decides to word this. So I'm confused as to why they decided to put it all directly under unarmed strike. Um, 
but I, I've never played a monk before, so maybe. And I, I did do some research, you know. I, I did pull out my old player's handbook and, and look up all of the the books I have for information on monks. Uh, and I did I did read through it all, so I didn't come into this completely blind on monks. But uh, maybe you guys can explain to me why this is a, a good idea or even necessary. It seems like something to do just to say, hey, we did it. Um... I don't know. Seems redundant. Maybe I'll explain it in a minute, and I just was too impatient. We'll see. For the cool options for your character when you are throwing down with your fists, or you're wrestling, or you're just trying to push someone back. But we also wanted to make it so that the monk could really benefit from this, because this means, unlike in 2014, any time the monk is making an unarmed strike, including as a bonus action, that unarmed strike could be dealing damage, or it could be starting a grapple, or it could involve shoving somebody. That means the monk has an amount of uh, tactical versatility that is with their unarmed strikes, which is akin to the tactical versatility that our weapon users have who are using weapon mastery. Absolutely. And, and but a whole lot is a fun is hiding out in the unarmed strike itself and how it then combines with the monk's various abilities that use the unarmed strike. And that is evident right away in the martial arts feature. You can just be pushing someone all around the map. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And also, you know, boom, bonus action starting a grapple. Yeah. Uh, later on, as monks are able to get more and more unarmed strikes on their turn, each of those unarmed strikes could be a different one of these options. Yeah. Uh, you could be shoving one person, starting a grapple with another, punching them, kicking away the other person yeah, with the yeah. shove. Uh, it, it is really cinematic and exciting in actual play. Okay, so I, I just got a little impatient as well. It looks like they did it solely to benefit the monk, which is fine. That's fine. Um, the monk seems like it needed it, especially, you know, it, 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 it'll make it a little bit more fun, so maybe there'll be more players. Um, maybe not. I don't care either way. <laughs> I'm a little bit biased on this because, I mean, here's the thing. A lot of people argue with me that artificers don't belong in D&D because it's, it's fantasy and guns don't have a place in fantasy. Uh, however, in all of the fantasy books I read, in all the fantasy movies I watch, in all the fantasy anime I watch, uh, guns are, are more likely to show up than a bunch of dudes randomly punching people in, in a world of swords and magic, you know? Um, so it, my argument is if artificers don't belong in D&D, &D, monks don't belong in D&D, &D, and that's – I don't believe that just – let me throw that out there. I know that's a hot take. It just seems boring to me when you have all these character classes with fun lore, with fun abilities, and then you got this class that they can use weapons, but a very limited number. And they they have increased the the number of the types of weapons they can use for their for their monk weapons, and that's cool. Um, but I, I will always be biased because of that. I'm not saying that you, you won't read a fantasy book where there's not a character going around just punching people. There, Sure, there are. Um, it's just not as prevalent um, as other things in fantasy, especially high fantasy. Um, that's not to say that the monk is a bad class. None of the classes are... Almost none of the classes are bad. You all know the one. Um... But, it, I mean, case in point, statistically speaking, the monk is, is the least played class. Uh, last I checked, and bear with me because it's been a while, but last I checked, the monk was pay, played less than the ranger because it's boring. It's boring. It doesn't have to be boring. I'm sure there's some fun concepts. And, and I mean, in some of my shorts, I, I use the monk as, as a stepping stone for some of my you know character builds. Um, but that's more of... Like, a Jedi is a monk, so you're going to have a monk, you know? and But it doesn't stay a monk, you know? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's kind of... 
I think it's neat that they took the th these three actions and moved them into just unarmed strikes so that the monk can use them all multiple times throughout a turn. Um, but for them to sit there and be like, we did this for all of the classes. No, you didn't. You did it for the monk. You did it for the monk. You wanted the monk to be playable uh, because it hasn't been. And that's fine. But, like, own up to it. I think that's enough of that tangent. Yeah. The monk, through this martial arts feature, can now use their dexterity rather than their strength to set the DCs for the new grappling and shove options that are inside the unarmed strike. So we, we wanted to make sure that the monk, uh, who is most interested in having a high dexterity and secondarily a high wisdom, that they did not need to then sort of also need to have a really good strength. We wanted monks to be able to take that dexterity and have it even uh, support them when they're using their grappling and shoving options within unarmed strike. Monks also have their martial arts die. And this is the die that they use for their unarmed strikes. It's also uh, the die uh, that they can use with their monk weapons. And as they go up in level, uh, at various times, the die improves, which then means, of course, the damage of their unarmed strikes is improving and the damage of their monk weapons is potentially improving, depending on what the weapons damage die was originally. Across the board, the martial arts die has been improved. And so it now starts at a D6 at level one and goes all the way up to a D12 at level 17, which means monks have just simply had a buff across the board on their damage output. Because we, we realize digging into the, the intricacies of the class's math that it just was not delivering the amount of damage that it should. And so this is a rare case in this player's handbook of a class just simply getting a flat out and, damage buff. Uh, just a flat out damage buff. Yeah. And we were able to do that because this is also the unusual class that has so much of its damage passing through a single feature. And in this case, it's the martial arts feature. Whereas we have other classes. Look, I have no problem with them giving it a damage buff. And they're being open about it, which is great. Because they haven't been open about a lot of shit. Um, but... They monks get the most hits out of any class. Um, so singular hit is it the least damaging class? Sure. But when you count up all of its hits, is it still the least amount of damage? I don't know. I don't know. I think somewhere uh, we got lost in this intricate math. It's basic addition. Let's not call it intricate. There's Nothing about the math in Dungeons and Dragons is intricate. Let's be real. It's it's basic addition. The monk just has a lot more of it because there's a lot more attacks every turn. It's I don't know if they were one of the the weakest classes damage wise. I don't know if their damage output wasn't where it should have been. It was as low as it was because of how many hits they get. It was a balancing mechanic. But would it stand up to to a paladin with divine smite, like twenty fourteen divine smite? Uh, probably not. I'd have to I would have to go in and double check the damage, but I would say no, especially if that paladin multi class in monk or or fighter where they get more hits than what they already get as a paladin, you know, um. If if you're running a campaign of just nobody's allowed the multi-class, their damage output's not going to be the worst. It won't be the greatest, but it, it won't be the worst. It'll be good. I mean, it's got to be when you're getting 15 hits a turn. Obviously, it's not 15, but it's a lot. It's a lot, okay? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just hope they didn't damage it or buff the damage up so much that with all of their hits a turn, they can now like one shot the the big bad of campaigns. It's because that would be that would be ridiculous.
This concerns me slightly. Where damage is instead routing through different weapons, it's routing through different spells, whereas with the monk, so much funnels through this level one feature. You ready for some more monk excitement? Yes, I am ready for more monk excitement. I'm concerned that this is going to be a three-hour video on the monk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at level two, yeah. we made it a level. Wow! <laughs> This is a 40 minute video. Um, I'm struggling to get through the first 10 minutes. Granted, it is four o'clock in the morning for me um, at the time of recording. If this is a three hour video, y'all wouldn't get a monk video from me. Uh, but the fact that it took eight minutes to get through one level is. Uh, uh, I hope y'all love monks. I hope y'all love monks. <laughs> we got to level two. So, in in the new feature called Monks Focus, yeah. this is this is a replacement for a feature that used to be called Key, and this has changed in way more than just name. It is, I mean, other than sort of some surface details of you get some points to spend on various things, there are so many functional changes in here that I'm. I'm glad just for that reason alone that the feature has a new name to signal to people. Yeah. Pay very close attention to this uh, because in the new Monk's Focus, you have, you have a, a pool of points that are now called focus points to spend not only on the options that are in this feature, but also a number of the options that appear later in the class. And anyone curious about using any monk material that was published prior to this book, anything that referred to key points in the past is a, should essentially just be read as now referring to focus points. Okay, we get it. You renamed Inside key points. this feature, you still have these sub options that were there before, but they're really only here in name. Uh, sure Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, and Step of the Wind. I say they're here really only in name because so much has changed functionally because there yeah, have been like key major points. enhancements here. First, Patient Defense now lets you take the Disengage action as a bonus action without spending any points. Oh, wow. Before it required points. Yeah. Now, when you get monk's focus you simply gain the ability to take the disengage action as a bonus action cool. similarly the step of the wind component of monk's focus lets you take the dash action as a bonus action so what these now do that relates to focus points is you can now use focus points to enhance them so for example you could spend a focus point with patient defense to yes take the dis disengage action as a bonus action, but also the dodge action at the same time. Whoa, all right, wrong button. I got way overzealous there. Sorry about that, technical error. So this is just so, so asinine. Here's the thing, here's the thing, and people are gonna disagree with me, mostly just DMs are gonna disagree with me here. The dash action, in my opinion, should be a bonus action if you're taking it in tandem with your movement. The reason I say that is because you're already moving. You're already you're already sprinting, right? You should be able to go. That's how I run the dash. Uh, if you run, stop, do something, and then you want to move again, it's now an action because you stopped your forward momentum. The disengage, I run it as a bonus action as long as you have movement left over after your attack. Uh, or, you know, if you're already face to face with somebody uh, to start your turn. You know, as long as you have movement, you can disengage. You need at least five feet of movement to disengage. That's how I run it as a bonus action because they should already be bonus actions. So be like, oh, look at this. We gave them to the monk as bonus actions once you hit second level. Screw you. Screw you. They should already be bonus actions. You're not going to be able to change my mind on this. They should already be bonus actions. You shouldn't have to waste your entire action just to move a little bit further, or just to be able to break away, okay? It it doesn't make any sense. If there's nothing balancing about making them actions, it's just, it's not. It's it's dumb, and this is asinine. I don't like it. And going, oh, they're, they're different. The only thing you did is make it so that they're free, so there's not 
any changes there. They're the same thing, except they're free now. So the monks get to hold on to more points, which is cool. Which is very cool, because most of them were only using them on Flurry of Blows anyway, because that's the only thing that's worth a damn at that level. Like, I just... I hope you guys love monks because I'm 10 minutes in and this is this guy is irritating me with this like I get he's excited about this complete overhaul about the monk and I wanted to be I really wanted to be like I don't like monks I, I don't like him as a, a lore prospect even going through all the books that I own over monks they still seem super boring I wanted to be excited about this video because I knew with a 40 minute video they're doing a huge overhaul of the class and I wanted to be excited about it. And there have been things in the first 10 minutes that have made me excited, like increasing the things they could use as a monk weapon. Cool. But this is just... Y'all are going to disagree with me and that's fine. Come at me in the comments, we'll talk about this, but this is asinine. I... Mm. I hope you guys love monks. I really do. Similarly, Step of the Wind, on its own, lets you just take the dash action as a bonus action, Whoops, or you can sorry. spend a focus point to be able to take the disengage and dash actions together and have your, your jump distance doubled for the rest of That's the turn. Cool. I'm okay and with so it. That's cool. And so now, spending point your focus yes. points, rather than it unlocking the base ability, is instead about enhancing the base ability. Uh, now, Flurry of Blows is the one of these three options within Monk's Focus that only has a version where you spend focus points on it. Yeah. And that is you spend a focus point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. The reason why it doesn't have a sort of freebie version. Hang on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. <clears throat> My well-worn book. This is, this book is from 2014. In case you can't tell by how it's falling apart on me. Uh, let's see here. I know, I know. There we are. What's the point of... There we go. <clears throat> Let's see here. Where, 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 where are we? Flurry blows. Immediately after you take, an act, take the action on your turn, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. So, Flurry of Blows hasn't changed at all. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'm sorry, he, mm -hmm. the main reason I'm harping on this so much is because you can't tell me, oh, they're only the same in name alone, they, they are so vastly different from they were before, and the only differences of the first two are, they're free now, or you can do them both at the same time for one, one battle focus point, key point, uh, and then there's no change to Flurry of Blows whatsoever, but, but remember, it's only the same in name, Ugh. why are you doing this to me? Look, I try not to show my, <laughs> my, yeah, uh, yeah, I try not to, but this guy, <sighs> I hope you guys love monks. Like patient defense and step of the wind. Oh, you've already gotten that. Exactly. You got the freebie version back at first level. Yeah. Because at first level, you now get the ability to just for free as a bonus action, boom. <laughs> use your unarmed strike. Yeah. So now what Flurry of Blows does is let you enhance that by spending a focus point. I really love this new approach where, it's not new. again, your focus points in a way are about <laughs> amping up the volume yeah. rather than needing them to do this so much. baseline You course. don't need them for the identity of this class. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because now the way we've structured it, even if you're out of focus points, you can do all the baseline monk things. Yeah. And focus points now become just really cool spice. Uh, that's how you crank it There's up. There's nothing cool focus about that. Focus points them. are also critical for some of your higher level abilities that can be used only I, with focus points. God, I hope so. Now, we also took to heart, though, 
that even though we had lessened how many of your baseline things require focus points, that monks have often felt focus point constraint and too constraint. Because we always want when there, when there is a limited resource in the game for there to be a sense of limit. I mean, that's the point for you to feel like your resource decisions matter and for there to be that growing sense of danger as you see, you know, you're basically your power tank going down toward empty, whether it's focus points or spell slots or something else. But even with all of that in mind, we felt we could give monks a little more breathing room. And so with that in mind, at level two, they get a brand new feature after all this other brand new called yeah. uncanny metabolism. <laughs> and what this lets the monk do is when they roll initiative, just decide to regain all their expended focus points. You're getting this feature now at level two. Now, once you use this feature, you can't do it again until you finish a long rest. But that means once per day, when a battle starts, you can just say, I got all my points back. And that's not all. Uh, you also regain a certain number of hit points when you do that. So <laughs> this uncanny metabolism is you just drawing in your personal resources and saying, I'm ready for another fight. Yeah. And that's probably gonna keep you going. Uh, for the rest of the adventuring day, or at least a good part of it. Nice. Now, when you get to level three... <laughs> We're at level three. Yeah. <laughs> it took 14 um, minutes to get to level You now three. get deflect attacks, and this feature has been redesigned so that it is more versatile than it was before. This used to be the feature well, that gave you a chance of catching a projectile mm -hmm. that was fired at you. And if you managed to zero out the damage completely, you then had the option of trying to hurl it back. And then there were some complexities of the nature of that projectile affected the damage that you were sending back. We wanted it to be easier and more fun for monks to use this ability. Uh, and so what we did is we now made it easier just the whole operation for the monk to figure out you know how they reduce the damage we no longer care about the 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 physical quality of the thing that's hitting you all we care about in this rule now is that it deals bludgeoning piercing or slashing damage so whatever it is that's coming in you can try to deflect it uh, and reduce the damage and then if you reduce it to zero uh, and that reduction, by the way, is you roll a d10 and you add your dexterity modifier and your monk level. And if all of that combined zeroes the damage out, you have the option of spending a focus point to then e point. basically re redirect the attack's force towards somebody else. And now that other target now has to make a saving throw and if they fail, you get to do an amount of force damage to them based on your martial arts dice. And remember, your martial arts dice are way better than they used to be. Yeah. This feature gets even spicier at higher level, and I'm gonna skip ahead, uh, because later on- end. Eventually it's energy. Yes, all the way at level 13, you get a feature now called deflect energy, where you can now use deflect attacks to uh, deflect any damage type, uh, no matter what it is, whatever energy is coming in. The I think deflect attack is really cool. It's super cool. It's something that you see monks do in in old movies, in um, like Bruce Lee movies, shit like that. It's really, really cool. I love the idea of it. I don't love it enough to listen to it for two minutes. I know you guys can't see the timer because my ugly mug is in the way, but trust me, we started this we started this at 13 minutes and 55 seconds. We're currently at 16 minutes and 11 seconds. Oh my god. For this one feature. It's a cool feature. I like it. It's it's fun. It makes sense for the class. Good job. Move on. The, the monk with their just their preternatural uh, abilities uh, yeah. uh, 
can use their focus to bounce that fire over there, you know, deflect that wave of thunder towards somebody else. Uh, it's pretty badass. Yeah, that's amazing. In addition to their damage output being improved, we have also looked at ways to improve their survivability. Uh, and that is, that's evident in how their superior defense feature works at level 18. Uh, it is also evident in their discipline survivor ability, which is what they can use to reroll saving throws. Um, it's also especially evident at level 10 in their self-restoration ability, which is a new feature that combines elements that they used to have in other features, where when they get to their end of the, the end of their turn, if they're charmed, frightened, or poisoned, and again, this is at level 10, they can just say, no, I'm not. And, and, and before, this had an action economy cost associated yeah, yeah. with it. No, not anymore. Now just the monk, they get to their end of their turn, and it is literally this good of their charm frightened or poisoned. Nah. We really... Why? Can somebody explain to me why they can do that for free? It didn't make sense when you were spending a key point for it. Like... None of those status effects are, like, overly game-breaking, sure. But they're in the game for a reason. To have a class that can just decide at the end of the turn, nah, I'm not experiencing that status effect anymore because I don't want to. Why? Why do they get that ability? Make it make sense. Why does the monk get it and not, say, like, a paladin or a barbarian or, you know, a wizard? Like, I get you want to give the monks more survivability, but that has nothing to do with their survivability. Not really. Not directly. It's neat. It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. This is just a big gimmick class. I'm starting to understand why it's not played. Like, I knew why I didn't want to play it because it's boring to me, but I'm starting to understand why other people don't play it. Because if we wanted gimmicks um well happy meals would be on the rise with adults not just children you know uh this is just a shitty happy meal we wanted monks to have this kind of superheroism uh in how not only they fight others but also in how they're able to keep themselves alive uh, we also uh, have adjusted in a level 10 feature called Heightened Focus what you can do with Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, and Step of the Wind. So we already enhanced those three options back at level 2. Well, when you get to level 10, they all get even better. Uh, and we did this because these three options are so fundamental to the monk. You know, one being about... Uh, keeping themselves alive in the form of patient defense. Flurry of Blows is essentially their damage output option for their monk's focus, and Step of the Wind is their mobility option. And again, all three get better at level 10. In between, when they got those features back at level 2 and them getting improved at level 10, they also now have their Stunning Strike, which has been adjusted. Now, this is one of the only places in the Monk where a feature's power got toned down a slight bit. <laughs> right, yeah. <clears throat> and we don't feel bad about it, given how much the Monk has been buffed. Yeah. Um, we've now made it so that Stunning Strike can be used just once per turn, uh, because there have been cases in the past 10 years where uh, Stunning Strike can get a little out of hand if a Monk player uses it over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, but I think the sting of that limitation will pass very quickly when people realize that we've now made it that if the target, even if they succeed on their saving throw, they're still affected to a certain extent. So if, if they fail their saving throw against your stunning strike, they're stunned, as you would expect. 
if they succeed on their saving throw, their speed is halved until oh, the wow. start of your next turn, and the next attack roll made against them has advantage. So when you use Stunning Strike, it's going to have an effect on your target. And really, they're making a saving throw to find out what that effect is going to be. Uh, so in the end, Stunning Strike actually got buffed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, and it's just, it's really, we've limited how often you can use it. That's perfect. So on top of all of that, yeah. monks, like everybody else, get Epic Boon at 19th level. And uh, also then have some majorly enhanced subclasses. One of my absolute favorite. I defy you to reach level 19 and monk level 19. Nobody's going to reach monk level 19, even with all of its new gimmicks. Prove me wrong. Hey, I've got all the time in the world for you to be bored out of your mind with this class. Some of these gimmicks are fun. Hopefully they can save it in the next 20 minutes with the three subclasses. But so far, the last 20 minutes has been saying that they've made changes to things that I read directly from the player's the 2014 player's handbook. This is so old, it's falling apart because I got this. My wife bought this for me when it printed in 2014. Okay. This was like pre-order. Okay. I read from this to prove that he's lying about shit being changed. The only shit that's been changed is certain shit's free now, okay? They're saying, oh, it's changed. It hasn't changed. It hasn't. I proved it. I read it from the book. Hopefully, they've made changes to the subclasses, and they're not just saying that they made changes. My book's falling apart too much, and I don't know where I put my other one right now. So I'm not going to try and prove them wrong right now. So if it sounds familiar, I'm going to make a note of it, and I'll make a video about it. Another video about it. Promise you that. But the, the small things that they have changed is just gimmicky. Some of them are fun. It's just gimmicky. It, it, overall, the class is the same boring class it's been for the last 10 years. I don't... I hope you guys like monks. Favorite ones, just because the, just from the look of them and and the mix of healing and necrotic damage is uh, the warrior of mercy. And That's this a is a doctor. subclass that appeared for the first time in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, where it appeared with the name Way of Mercy, and people will see that all of the monk subclasses now have a naming pattern of Warrior of Something. Yeah, It's the same subclass sure. as before, uh, just now with Warrior at the front instead of Way of. And in several of our classes, we have unified how that class's subclasses are named. When we get to the Sorcerer, we'll talk about how all of their, their subclass names have been unified. Uh, and we've done that uh, in a variety of places to, to not only get the names so that they're all structured the same way, but also to set up how we'll name the subclasses in future books. So the Warrior of Mercy of the four monk subclasses in the book is the one that has evolved the least, partly because it AKA it, change, hasn't it's most well. recent it's in the, the most, new designs. Exactly. So, yeah. It's the most recent. And so the main thing that has happened here with this monk, who's all about both help and harm, has been integrating it into the revised class. So otherwise, this is the subclass people know and love from Tasha's Cauldron, but now fully integrated into this completely redesigned monk class. But the, the subclass features themselves, other than some tweaks and wording to make it so that they fully integrate, it's it's what you saw the last time you you played and enjoyed this subclass. It's an incredibly fun subclass. Now all right, well at least he was honest this time. Hey, we changed nothing from the subclass other than the name. I'm okay with that. You know, I I don't have uh Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um 
my my roommate has the the digital copy and i did kind of skim through it for for this um but i don't have access to it right now um but i don't need access to it since he straight up said nothing's changed other than the name um but it wasn't and it, i mean it, it it was it reading through it made it seem kind of clunky keep in mind i've never played it so correct me if I'm wrong if you've played it before, but it seemed like a super clunky subclass. Um, maybe I'm wrong. It's just based solely off of reading it. Um, but moving on. When we get to the other three subclasses, we have the Warrior of Shadow, we have the Warrior of the Elements, and the Warrior of the Open Hand. So the Warrior of the Elements completely replaces the Way of the Four Elements. Uh, the Way of the Four Elements, sadly, uh, in terms of satisfaction, was oh. often the lowest rated subclass in the 2014 Player's Handbook. Yeah. Um, and so looking at it, we realize the best path forward is to replace it. Yeah. And the Warrior of the Elements is a subclass that people got to see a draft of in the Unearthed Arcana process. I hope they didn't and now the, name. the final version is here in the book. This is a monk who is all about channeling the elemental forces of the multiverse and using those elemental powers as part of their martial arts. Like and grounded. so you're going to see a number of really fun things here related to that. First off, these monks are able to increase the reach of all of their unarmed strikes as they use wind and water and fire and earth to extend their reach. So you can imagine you know, cool tendrils of water going out to make it so that this monk can punch someone, uh, you know, like 10 feet over there. Yeah. And it's not Mr. Fantasticking or one piecing over there with a stretchy punch. No, it's the elements themselves reaching out to extend their reach. Uh, we also give them, and you, you alluded to this, we give them a new cantrip, the elementalism cantrip, that allows them to shape the elements around them, shape water, fire, earth, etc., so that they uh, can feel like they have some of this elemental magic even when they're outside combat. And when you get the subclass, because by the way, this is all right when you first get the subclass, yeah, you gain yeah. these benefits. You gain elementalism, you gain your extended reach, and you also are able to do your elemental strikes. And so whenever you hit somebody now with that extended reach that the elements are giving you and you are dealing damage to them, uh, you can first off change that damage type to a list, one of a list of damage types that we provide, all elementally themed. But then you can also force the target to make a saving throw. And if they fail, you can move them around the battlefield as either wind is blowing them or water is causing them to flow away or fire is, is causing them to stumble back. Whichever element it is that you're deploying, you suddenly, with that extended reach, get to be like, no, you're here, you're now over there. So a lot of tactical fun. Uh, is waiting for you right here at level three when you first get this subclass. Then when you get up to level six, you gain the ability to essentially extend your elemental power to a greater distance. Now you'll be able to take a magic action, expend some focus points, and then cause an explosion of elemental power up to 120 feet away from you. And this is a 20 foot radius sphere explosion Whoa. where you now deal damage in it and it is based on your martial arts dice. And so this is something that will scale with you yeah. as your martial arts die gets better. Uh, so even better than we did with the, the way of the four elements, we're giving you the ability to easily just bring some spectacular elemental effects to the battlefield. And rather than expecting you to choose a particular element that you use all the time, the theme of the way of the elements, and it's partly why we changed the name of the subclass, 
uh, rather the warrior of the elements, is you are tapping into the whole elemental chaos. You're not necessarily tied to any particular elemental plane. Instead, you're tapping into the chaotic mixture of all of them, which is one of the reasons why we made it so that you can choose every time you use these abilities to pick a different one of the damage types mm -hmm. uh, that are available here. It's also why even in the art for this subclass, you'll see in the monk's image that she is channeling multiple different elements all at the same time, oh, see fire uh, rather than just being a, a monk of fire multiple, or earth or wind or what have you. Uh, we also have made it so that um, while you have those benefits going of that extended reach and you're using your elemental strikes, which I should have mentioned earlier, you have to actually activate. They're not on all the time. Right. Um, you have to spend focus points to turn them on. Um, and so when you're just going about your day, you don't have water extending <laughs> from your, yeah, from yeah, your yeah. hand. No, no, maybe, maybe um, I do. But yeah, if you use focus points to turn on these powers, yeah, well, key point to turn on the powers. that power that you've turned just on turn just gets better and better as you go up in level. So once you reach a level 11, whenever you've activated your elemental attunement, that's the name of the feature that gives you that extended reach and those elemental Florida. strikes, now you also have a fly speed and a swim speed because you are carried aloft by the winds. Right. You are. Sure. You are pushed along by the waters. Uh, so now you have a supreme mobility on top of the outstanding mobility that monks already have. Sure. Then at level 17, you get a feature called Elemental Epitome. And this also improves your elemental attunement ability. You now get an elemental damage resistance that you get to choose. And you get to choose it at the start of every one of your turns. So, oh, wow. So every time your turn starts, you just get to decide if that turn, or rather until you know the start of your next turn, you have resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. And in certain battles, that could be really useful to be able to just keep switching those. Yeah. Um, also, we've made it so that when you use your step of the wind while your elemental Ooh. attunement is going, you your speed bullshit. increases. Oh. So now you're even faster. Uh, and it's as so you move bullshit. around the battlefield, you can cause damage oh, there it to, is. You get to, to foes bullshit. that you're moving yeah, by right. because of all this elemental oh, nice. power yeah, yeah. that is swirling around you. In many ways, you can almost imagine the warrior of the elements as the cousin of the circle of the sea druid right. uh, because both of them are going to have these sort of destructive auras around them, but they use them in very different ways, although they can, the two of them, fly and swim together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I kind of think of them as buddies. You also, in this wow. capstone ability, have the, the option to just once per turn deal some extra damage because of just all cause. of this elemental power yeah, just that is swirling Don't, around you. Can stop, you. you can stop just uh, cause. And so all of these features combined make the warrior of the elements this elemental power. This gimmicky piece of hot garbage. Look, we all want to be the Avatar from, from Avatar the Last Airbender or from Korra. Look, I get it. I do. I do. I love those shows too. I my wife has made me watch Avatar The Last Airbender probably about 12 times, okay? We celebrate our 11th anniversary this year. We have watched Avatar The Last Airbender and Korra start to finish more times than years we've been married, okay? I love it. I do. And so this subclass will see play in the beginning for a month, maybe two. But it's just gimmicky bullshit. They took this class that was already kind of complicated and they decided, hmm, let's give it more gimmicky random bullshit. 
and make it more complicated so nobody can figure out how to play it. Like, I'm sorry. I like to consider myself a moderately intelligent man. I shouldn't need a fucking PhD to be able to follow all the goddamn bullshit in this one subclass. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Um, and for it to be able to do all this gimmicky shit, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's a gimmick subclass. That's what, that's what I expect from gimmicks, right? Just don't be surprised when nobody wants to play it because it's unplayable. And it's like he's so excited. It's just going to be a, it's a huge overhaul. Everyone's going to play. No, nobody's going to play this. Nobody wanna play this. It's it's Avatar on steroids, but it's convoluted and stupid tchotchke bullshit. That's all it is. That that's all it is. Okay. I'm sorry. Actually I'm not even sorry. I'm not even sorry. It's random tchotchke bullshit. Full stop. Okay. <sighs> Moving on. House, who's going to be moving around quickly on the battlefield who has not only an extended reach, but also a built-in magical ranged uh, ability to blow up yeah, uh, a, range an bullshit. area. I think it's going to be class. super exciting. No, so now not. let's talk about the Warrior of Shadow. I, I have played this subclass quite a bit. This no, has didn't. had significant quality of life improvements in it. Look, he says that about everything, it seems like. There's no way he's played this many subclasses, this many classes. In the, unless he's only playing one-shots. We all know a campaign's taken multiple years. One D&D didn't take multiple years to write. You know, Unearthed Arcana was, was several years, sure, but it wasn't enough years for this guy to be able to play every single class, almost every single subclass for every single class, unless he's either, one, only doing one-shots, or running several campaigns at a time. Shut up. No, you didn't. Ugh. Now I'm just nitpicking on everything because this, this, the, the warrior of the elements has pissed me off. It makes you even more dangerous. If you wanted that shadow fell, the threat in the darkness feeling, this is, this is the subclass for you. Yeah, we wanted to make it so that the warrior of shadow was even more suffused by shadow than it was before. And one of the ways that we did that is we preserved the ability for this subclass to cast the darkness spell, but now we've made it so that you can see in that darkness. Anyone who has used that spell, you know that part of its power is very few creatures in the game can see through that darkness. Yeah. And so being able to create that darkness and see in it and then later use your own darkness that you've created to fuel your shadow step, the teleportation that these monks get that relies on you being in dim light or darkness, you can start creating synergies with yourself uh, that are just super fun. Yeah. The advantages you get by, uh, by being able to see someone in the darkness and them not being able to see you are extreme. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you now are... Uh, in many ways, the the uh, scary companion to the assassin rogue. Yeah. Uh, it it just as the the warrior of the elements is the the buddy of the circle of the sea druid, the warrior of shadow and the monk is definitely the buddy of the assassin. And right. I could see these two being a really scary pair, uh, hunting down the bad guys. Uh, we have taken that. Uh, Shadow Step ability, which is so core to the identity of the Warrior of Shadow, preserved it, but then improved it at level 11 with improved Shadow Step. We've now made it so that when you use your Shadow Step, you now have the option of expending a focus point to make it so that you are not required to start or end the teleportation in dim light or darkness. Yeah. And because we found that as cool as Shadow Step has always been, one of the most difficult aspects of it were 
being in an adventuring context where there is no dim light or darkness. Yeah. And now we've we've sort of double solved for this here by giving you this darkness you can create and see in, yeah. so you can use that. Because if you are physically in the light, that's still an issue. Yes, and and we really, we wanted to make sure you could always use your core ability yeah. as that, that's a part of this subclass. But, but there's more in improved shadow step, we've also made it so that if you spend that focus point, you not only don't have to start or end in dim light or darkness, but as the part of the same bonus action when you teleport, hey, you also get to make an unarmed strike yeah. uh, immediately after you teleport. So you can just suddenly appear next to somebody and kabam. Yeah. Finally, at level 17, we have a much improved uh, Cloak of Shadows ability. And this not only lets you turn invisible, yeah. but it also makes you partially incorporeal yeah. so that now you can pass through occupied spaces as if they were difficult terrain. Uh, and you can use your flurry of blows, which is normally costs a focus point to make two unarmed strikes as, as a bonus action. You can now use that while you're in this, this limited time uh, cloak of shadows form, you can use that flurry of blows without spending any focus points. Now, instead, you are spending focus points to activate your Cloak of yeah. Shadows, but once you've activated it, uh, you can just be this shadowy force moving around and punching or kicking the heck out of things. I mean, obviously, this, this has nice synergy with the Gloomstalker Ranger as well as the Assassin, but I, boy, I, I would either like to see these two together or fighting each other, the Fey Patron Warlock teleporting all over the battlefield and... Shut up. Shut up. This video has enough has had enough gimmicky tchotchke bullshit with Yao Chu coming up with this stupid little game plan of tchotchke bullshit versus tchotchke bullshit. We've had enough. We've had enough we've we're at 35 minutes of nothing but tchotchke bullshit. Enough. Please. Okay. I get it. For whatever reason, you wanted to make this monk video the longest out of all of them. I guess you wanted to get people really excited about the monk. And you really thought nobody would look it up. Nobody would try and call you on all the tchotchke bullshit. Nobody would call you on all the stuff that hasn't changed you said has. I get it. I do. I understand. Okay? Look, my day job is I'm a maintenance technician. There are times where I have to pretend like I'm working too. I get it. I do. Okay? I lie to my boss all the time saying that I did stuff that didn't that I didn't do because I had done it two days prior. Okay? I get it. But come on. Come on. Move on. Now I'm going to be looking at the Way of the Shadows and comparing it to the Warrior of the Shadows. And if it's basically the same class, I will be making another video calling calling you on it. That's exactly what's going to happen. You've drawn me to this. I, hmm, I'm feeling vindictive now. Now there's one more class. One more subclass. Five more minutes of this video. I hope you guys like monks. I really do. And the shadow monk doing the same thing, and they're just trying to get at each other. It's like a constant chess match. It's not a PvP game. <laughs> but it That's just quitters talk right there. It's not a PvP game. It's not a PvP game. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Have you not had a uh, one of those one of those players that does stupid bullshit, and when you call him on, it's like, well, that's what my character would do. That's what my character would do. That's what my... Shut up. It is a PvP game. Maybe not 100% of the time. 60% of the time, it is a PvP game. Shut up. It is in my head. <laughs> not when I play. It's a co-op game. But it's fun. Listen, sometimes the best adventures start off with everyone not getting along. Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. But any, anyone who is like you 
what I would encourage is absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. What's going to come next? <laughs> oh no, no, no! This is it's a DMing tip. Yeah. Absolutely, take inspiration from classes and subclasses for the monsters that you create. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, there are some really cool abilities here that you absolutely could riff on in a a monster or NPC. Uh, and then you can absolutely create some of those awesome uh, moments. That is, that is actually really good DMing advice. I'm pretty surprised that he came up with that. Well, he probably didn't come up with it. Um, somebody else did. That is, that is actually really good DMing advice. Um, if ever your your players are just blowing through your encounters absolutely have some monstrous creatures that have classes and subclasses just to to turn it into a pvp match like there's it's still you're still gonna get your ass beat but that's the that's the way of the game that's the point um but it'll make the combat a lot harder for the players it'll feel more accomplished when they finally manage to win and you'll get to play some of these classes that you otherwise wouldn't get to play because you're a forever dm like me um so that is some pretty good dm advice i'm 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 surprised we got a little nugget of anything here other than nuggets of shit. That is a gold nugget. Gold star. It's that you're thinking of. Yeah. And that brings us to the final warrior. Yes, the warrior of the open hand. The warrior of the open hand we can kind of think of as the most monkish of the monks. Yeah. Uh, really leans into the core kit of the class, the unarmed strikes, the high mobility. And what we wanted to do here is just make sure it was delivering those goods it's not. Uh, in as fun a way as possible. It's not. We took, for instance, I'm wholeness sorry, of body me. at level six. And before, this was a way for this monk to heal themselves. It would, took a whole action. Now it's a bonus action. Uh, so we want you to be able to just weave this in to what other, the other things you're doing on your turn. Uh, and you can also now... But wait a second. Wait a second. You only get one bonus action a turn. You can get multiple actions occasionally, uh, depending on your class and, and what level you are. You can get multiple actions. But you only ever have one bonus action. And your uh, key points, I'm sorry, uh, was battle focus points can only be used for bonus actions. So if you do this, you then lose your ability to attack 50 times. Is, is, that, what I, is that what I'm hearing? Am I hearing this correctly? Because um, that's what it sounds like, which right off the bat means nobody's want to use it. Because um, everybody wants to attack as many times as possible. Everybody wants to hit as much as possible. From what I've seen over, you know, 12 years of DMing. Um, it's neat. It's neat. It really is. It's cool. I like it. But it defeats the whole purpose of being a monk, which is uh, spend your key points for Flurry of Blows to hit as many times as you can. I'm sorry, focus points. We we'll use this multiple times per day. Uh, and this is a part of our effort uh, to enhance monk survivability. We also have uh, a brand new feature in the Warrior of the Open Hand called Fleet Step. And what that this feature sense. does is whenever you take a bonus action to do anything other than Step of the Wind, you can also use Step of the Wind oh, wow. immediately after that bonus action. So I was just telling you about, oh, these, these monks can now heal themselves as a bonus action. Well, the very next feature combos with that, and it means okay. even if you use your bonus action to heal yourself, you can also step of the wind. Yeah. And that's because we wanted, that's cool. that's while cool. some of the other monk subclasses are again that. getting things like flight or teleportation, we wanted these to be the monks who are just zipping around the battlefield. Yeah. And even when they're like patching themselves up, it's like, oh my gosh, how fast is she running? Yeah. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, we revised Quivering Palm. Uh, this was the, I touch you, and then at some point, you, you, may, die. Or, you may or may die. <laughs> um, this is the uncle bad touch feature that they probably didn't revise like they said they did, but I'm not willing to look it up in my book to call them on it just yet. 
So I'll probably be making another video in the near future about monks. <sighs> I hope you guys like monks. <laughs> we, we've now made it so that it now deals a truckload of damage Ugh. on a failed save and a smaller truckload of damage on a successful one. It does no longer just instantly zero a, a creature out. Uh, this was a, a one of the, the only other places in the monk where we needed to adjust the power down a little bit because Quivering Palm before essentially had kind of the theoretical possibility to deal infinite damage because it it could reduce any creature, no matter how high their hit point pool was, down to zero. Yeah. And this was just not scaling well, particularly with some of the really? higher level encounters that- Wait, you mean an attack that could potentially drop somebody to zero even if they've got 300 health doesn't scale well? <gasps> I'm shocked. I don't know how they're shocked by that. That was also, like, the only good thing the monk had going for them was Quivering Palm. We want high-level characters to be able to have and have those encounters still be a challenge. Yeah. So what we did, even though we took away the <clears throat> deal infinite damage uh, portion of Quivering Palm, we did make sure that the damage it deals is, as I said, a truckload. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So all of these things together amount to a class that has been reimagined, redeveloped. Yes. I can't. I'm sorry. There's a minute left, but they're done talking about the monk class. Now they're just patting themselves on the back for being for being the apple of D D classes here. Um and by that I mean claiming innovation without actually being innovative. Um they've changed almost nothing and a little bit they did change. They changed so minutely that it's like did it even really change? Now, the Warrior of the Elements, I'm going to have to double check it. I do believe they changed a lot of it. It's not like a 100% overhaul, which is fine. That's fine. Um, Warrior of the Shadows, I'm going to have to double check in. And Warrior of the Open Palm, I'm going to have to double check in. But what little bit they they talked about having changed, I don't... It, I don't think they actually changed it enough to really be claimed that they changed it. For three of the four subclasses, it, what they really changed was just the name. They added a couple things. They did tweak a couple things here and there. And, and cool, cool, cool. But this isn't a completely reimagined class. A lot of the stuff they said they changed isn't changed. And that's dumb. But this is just a class of tchotchke bullshit gimmicks. It's always been a, sub, it's always been a class of tchotchke bullshit gimmicks but now it's even more tchotchke bullshit gimmicks it, it, it's cool that they took the quivering palm and made it so that it doesn't like instantly zero out somebody you know or doesn't have the chance to instantly zero out somebody that's cool because that was way too broken um even if the chances were low but that really was in my opinion the only thing monk glass had going for it um and it might still have that going for it. I don't know how much a truckload of damage is. A truckload of damage to me is probably different than a truckload of damage to Jeremy. Um, however, I am going to look up these other subclasses. And if I see that they are the same or similar enough, I will be making another video. I will be calling them out. Um, and, you know, if... Um, if Jeremy has a problem with that, maybe he should just send me the new handbook so I can compare the two and get everything down perfectly and be able to um, definitively say whether or not there are legitimate changes to this class. I don't know. Maybe let's uh, like, share, and, and uh, comment to try and get this thrown across his desk so he can see this and see me calling him out for... Um, half truths. I'll say, I don't. I don't want to be libelous here. Um, but yeah, this was the monk class. 
I feel like they just read most of it from the player's handbook. Um, I just dropped my coin. Yeah, this this is the monk class, I guess. It it is what it is. I, I'm disappointed. I wanted to be excited. I tried to be excited, and I just I don't know. I don't know. People are gonna disagree with me. And I'm happy for that. Come yell at me in the comments. We we can have a conversation. Um, some of you will agree with me. Once again, let's have a conversation in the comments. Um, yeah, I hated every second of this. All right, not every second, not every second. There was in the forty in the forty minute video that we watched thirty nine minute thirty nine and a half minutes of. I enjoyed probably about five minutes. Um, but thanks for watching. Sorry for taking up a lot of your time on this. Uh, if you could, uh, subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks again.